Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's your girl, Sir Fans or Vanessa. Thank you guys so much for clicking on the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell. And guys, make sure you watch this video to the end. Make sure you don't skip any parts so you can see step by step, beginner friendly, how I did this exquisite beaded bag. And this is a new method on how to do this beaded plate bag. And I call it the long tail or the long twine method so without further ado let's get right into the materials so you're going to need a 0.60 twine or personally I use a 0.60 twine any brand it doesn't matter if you have a 0.80 twine I would suggest you also use that I have my sugar beads here a pair of scissors and of course my circular um, craft board which is you know like I always say on my videos it is custom made here in Cameroon Okay, um, the first thing you're going to do is obviously cut your twine. You're going to go ahead and cut your twine however long or however comfortable you want it. Then we are going to start making a beaded mat. And of course to start a mat, you're going to start with um, three beads. You're going to put three beads into your twine. Then you're going to pick up a fourth bead and you are going to cross that bead. So basically this mat we are working is a 4x22 mat so for this tutorial you are not going to be working directly on the um, you know on the craft board you are going to work the um, beaded part separate so that's me just putting one bead in one in each of the twines and crossing with the you know the third bead so that is our second you know row I said four by you know 22 so you're going to go ahead and do another you know three so I've just crossed my bead right there and now we are about to make the fourth and we are going to make this fourth one and turn at the same time we're going to turn our work so I'm going to put three um, beads in one twine then I am going to cross with the third bead so this completes our you know our fourth um i am so close to saying stitch like i've been crocheting for so long i'm this close to saying stitch and rows so as we have turned our work my god crochet is in my head as we have turned our work to continue we are going to pick up three beads with the twine on our right and we are going to cross um the third bead with the twine on our left so this automatically starts um row two <laughs> guys bear with me it's going to be row two it is going to be row two and row one in this video now with the twine on your um, left you're going to insert it into the closest bead get the twine on your right insert two beads and take the twine on your left and cross with the second bead so you're going to continue doing this obviously till you complete row two so we are still progressing so um basically you are going to make a mat that is thick enough if you if this four isn't comfortable for you you could go ahead and do five if 22 is too long you can go ahead and do 20 or 25 so this is according to your preference and according to your craft board like i said my craft board is um you know it's locally made here so it might be different from yours so i'm going to show you how to measure how long your um you know your mat is supposed to be or how long your mat is supposed to look like so let's go ahead and finish up row number two i have put two beads into the twine on my left and i am crossing it with the twine on my right so we have finished um row two at this point start row three with the twine on my right i'm going to pick up three beads and with the twine on my left i am going to cross with the third bead to start up the third row so you're just going to go what you are going to continue doing i can't talk guys i'm going to continue doing this for as long as you want like i said i'm going to show you how to measure it so this is what a 4 by 22 mat looks like so 4 by 22 so like i said you are doing your back according to 
how your craft board is so this is how i measure it i just wrap it around like that and if i feel like the opening is too big i go ahead and increase my rows if it's too small i reduce my rows so that is just basically how you measure this thing now this is the real part you need to pay attention guys do not skip if you skip it it's you're going to be lost you are going to be completely lost so go ahead and unravel a long ass twine guys i don't know if you're uncomfortable with long twines you need to be comfortable here it should be long it should be more than eight meters it should be very long because this twine is going to be worked on two sides of this project this twine is going to help you attach your mat to your craft board so i am basically just weaving in the twine into you know the gaps that i'm having you see that motion that i did just there you're just going to go ahead and follow that motion so go ahead and weave in the twine into those spaces if you had um you know five rows at the start instead of four like i have here your twine is supposed to come out at the top bead but since i have four i am just going to send it directly into that bead instead of going around again because your twine needs to come out at that top bead right there it needs to come out there guys when i say you need to make a long ass twine it should be very long a very long twine it should curl around the floor several times if possible this is important so you are just going to you know separate the twine one on the left one on the right so keep the one that you're not using yet somewhere keep it far away now we are going to grab our craft board listen closely and play and pay close attention so this is what we're going to do i am going to zoom in so you can see clearly what i am doing now you're going to pick up three beads pick up three beads and make sure you differentiate your top and the front part of your board i am going to pass my twine from top to bottom do you hear that guys i am passing my twine from top to bottom into any one of the holes i always find the part which is more smooth to be at the top and you see those beads at the corner you know the beads that had you know the, the 21 row into the very first one i am going to insert my twine there so that completes um i don't know if i should call it row number one of the holes but this is basically how we are going to be joining this entire bag together so when you have um, sent, it into, sent the twine into one of those beads, you're going to pick up three beads again. So that is two and this is three. Then you are going to send the twine into the next hole over your, your craft board on the right side to under on the wrong side. So that is basically all we are going to be doing in this video. So this is a continuous process i'm not gonna lie it's not it's not easy especially if you're new and you just started with it it's not it's not going to be easy doing this like you need to find a comfortable position which is going to work for you so when you have that bead um after the three beads obviously you're going to um send your twine into the second bead of our you know our 22 rows then you're going to pick up three beads again and continue the process guys make sure you are pulling but at the beginning do not pull too hard or you are going to pull on that twine hanging on the other side and you're going to shorten it so um my craft board was you know rough around the edges like the person who cut it didn't smooth it out well so basically i had to double my twine that's why I said if you had a point eight, you can go ahead and use it. In the end, I had to double up my twine. I'm going to show you all that in a moment. But this is basically the pattern which we are going to use to, you know, join our mat 
to the to the back so the reason why I like this is because you don't work you don't work first of all on the board directly when you're starting and the outcome of this particular design is um, more pretty in my opinion and more beautiful than when you um, work your beads directly on the craft board I don't know if that makes sense but like I said it's not going to be easy when you're starting this you need to find a good position to you know to stay in order to um, secure your bead you might need you might want to get something to support your um, your craft board as you can see here I was simply tying off the twine on this other side so it won't move as much it's not going to you know be pulled on this other side and cause it to be short now I didn't say it but the reason why you want a long twine is because that twine is going to finish the entire part of your project what do i mean so that very long ass twine you made is supposed to go around your whole you know the whole joining um joining of your mat to your craft board without any shortages so you don't need shortages so here basically i had doubled the two twines like i said I said it was rough around the edges and I was scared that it was going to you know cut and I have my little torch there that I used to support now it wasn't easy working with two um, twine so I will say that you should use if you use a point 60 to make your mat go ahead and use a point 80 to do your um, you know the attachment and make sure you are pulling you need this baby to be firm you need her to be firm and nice and sturdy so make sure you're pulling on it very hard so you're going to um, continue picking up you know, three beads then you're passing it over from the front to the back then you're going to weave it in into the um, sides obviously and the reason why i like this design also is because it sort of cinches in you know that mat that you've made and it makes the back to have some sort of a round shape that I don't know personally I like so I just thought you know let me share it to y'all I know it may sound or it may look difficult but it's difficult when you start it's it's difficult but if you practice it you're going to come to love it and you're going to come to understand how it works so you're going to make sure you keep on pulling you need to hold it down you need to keep on pulling it so that the previous um attachments that you've made are not going to end up being weak so you continue doing that guys i'm sorry for my voice i have a sore throat but i had to get this tutorial out anyway so like i said it is basically the same thing over and over again till you get to the end by the way guys we reached 1000 subscribers thank you guys so much for the love and the support i appreciate it a lot now all i need from you guys is for y'all to watch my videos i need those watch hours so help me with those watch hours i know you guys can do it so make sure you watch all my videos to the end do not skip any part whatsoever watch it all to the end if you see an ad on my video please watch the ads please 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 okay so if you have done a good portion of you know of of weaving or of um joining both parts together you can go ahead and put your back down like so and support the plate with something so it stays upright and you can continue working with um, the mat touching the ground um, when you get to this stage it gets easier it gets even better it's going to be very fast no time wasted and I find that this method also is um, it, it's quick it's quick if you know what you're doing that's that that's the bottom line it's quick if you know what you're doing so guys just go ahead and you know continue 
waving in your back. Now, if you do not understand what I am doing, I feel like watching, you know, just continue watching. I'm not going to fast forward it, you're just going to watch keenly what I am doing so you can understand, you know, if in case I'm not explaining it to your understanding. Just go ahead and keep on watching. By the way guys at this point if you have not subscribed to the channel please subscribe please turn on the notification bell make sure you turn on the notification bell please leave me a like leave me a comment tell me what you think if you want me to recreate recreate any beat it back make sure you tell me in the comment section make sure you share this video with someone who you think is going to help you know because beat is a business guys you can make money out of this so share it to someone who you know needs a small business so go ahead and share this So here we are at the end. I am just finishing up with um, my, you know, three beads. I just finished up with my three beads there, and I am, you know, attaching the last of the twine to the bag. Uh, as you can see, I am still pulling. This thing needs to be tight. You need to hold it tight. So I'll just continue by just weaving in the the rest of the twine. I'm not going to tie it yet because you know that other twine on the other side needs to come and meet this one here before you tie your project. So um, make sure you just weave this in as tightly as possible so um, the side that you've already done won't unravel. So I'm just going to see you again when. We are about to start the other side thing. Okay, guys, as you can see, it's nice and done. Tell me you don't like the way that circle just cinches in. I don't know. There's just something about um, this method that just makes me happy. Now, we are taking, you know, our double twine on this other side. And we are going to start. You remember that process that we start? Yes, we are going to start it all over again. But this time, it's going to be even easier because one part is done. And you're not going to have too much problem with stability at this point. You know it's going to be very easy and like I said um, my craft boards were um, you know custom made here like I I just feel like shipping is going to be a lot um, I don't have money all the time to be doing shipping so I get them custom made here so if you want to know more information about that leave me a comment in the comment section and I am going to tell you about it, of course. Now we are going through a repetitive process. Obviously, we are going to pick up three beads and we are going to go from um, over, under, over, under. So it's a repetitive process. Like I said, please do not skip any part of the video. I may leave a tip somewhere that you that's going to help you or it's a very important tip. And you might miss it because you're trying to hurry to the video and, you know, forward it. 
but please just watch every single thing i'm going to be dropping hints and tips that are going to you know facilitate your work obviously So this is another way to help stabilize your project, you know, if it's slipping off too much, you're just going to put something at the back and you're going to lean your project towards it so it has something to, you know, hold it stable. I'm sorry if I'm sniffing a lot. Like I said, I have a sore throat, guys. So we're just going to continue weaving, 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 going from up and under, up and under, continuously till you get to the end. And here we are at the end of our project of course and i'm just going to finish off as usual like i said um you just you know finish your third beat your three beats then you start weaving in the ends till you get to you know where you left off the other twine so you're just going to go ahead and do that Now when you weave in your twine and they all meet in the same place, all you need to do is to tie it to secure those two parts together. So 
to secure those two fights to get in. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm feeling so sleepy and it's like 2 a.m. I'm editing this video. Anyway, um, yeah, so just go ahead and tie. Then, of course, you're going to weave it in your project the right way. Then you're going to snip off all the excess yarn. I nearly said yarn. I nearly said yarn. Too much crochet. You are going to snip off the excess twine. Yeah, you're going to do that. okay guys so this is our bag so far um tell me what you think about this method in the comment section tell me what you think is it worth it and tell me i know you i know you think it's nice i like the way it turned out it's so good but we are not done we are not done we need to take care of those holes at the top i know um some people prefer to leave the holes there but some clients don't like it so i'm going to show you how to you know cover those holes some way so the first thing you're going to do is to take a long twine and insert a bead into it and this first bead is going to act as a stopper then you're going to take one bead insert it into the twine you know and that bead is going to stop at you know the bottom you are going to insert that twine into you know the, the, the next hole yeah into the next beaded hole you're going to insert that twine right there you're going to pick up another bead so basically we are creating a series of stoppers you're going to pick up another bead and you are going to um, put that bead into the next space so you're going to go ahead and go back and forth like this when you're going from bottom to top know that you are inserting the twine into the same hole when you are to go from top to bottom Know that you are going into the next hole with the next bead. So I am going down. So I am going into the next hole. If I am about to go up, I'm going to put the bead and I'm going to put it the twine into that previous hole that has a bead inside. So we're just going to continue doing this. If you don't get it, just watch what I am doing in order to you know understand what you're supposed to do. So like I said, you're going to do this for the entire top of your back. I am so sorry I am away from the camera. But I was simply inserting the last bead. Then I tied it up. I just made a knot, you know, a tie to secure it. Now when you're done securing your twine by tying, you're going to weave in all that remaining twine into the side of your back or into the mat. They need to go somewhere, they can just remain at the top, there's no way for them to hide. So they're just going, you're just going to weave them into the back like so.
So of course you're going to do the same thing on the other side of your back. Repeat the same process going from down to up, up to down to you know decorate that empty space for the home. Yeah. So go ahead and do that for the rest of your back. Now this is our complete bag, she is coming together already, I'm just trying to weave in the length line and cutting it off. She is coming together already, look how nice she's looking, look how pretty she's looking. Tell me in the comment sections what you think about this method guys, I really want to know your thoughts or if you've known this method before me, let me know some sort of thing. Now we are just going to make you know the gaps that our handle is going to go through and I am just going to put my twine into one of the beads going down and I'm going to pick up five beads then I'm going to tie it to the back to secure so that was basically it that was basically it for making of the back handles very simple very easy as you can see one of our handles are already made it is very simple. Okay, now we are just putting the finishing touches of our bag. This is the handle I made. I have the full tutorial up on my channel already. Make sure you check that tutorial out. It is very simple, very easy to do at home. And I hand sewed it myself, by the way. It's a tutorial on how to, you know, if you've seen my other video on how on that pink beaded bag, cute bag that I made with, with that uh, fringe at the front then you know what i'm talking about if not go and look on my you know on my channel for a thumbnail with a pink back and that is it so instead for the rings i used um key holder rings because so the other ones i could find the other ones i had once you open them they won't close again so i couldn't use those so you're just going to pin those down and you are basically done with your back so if you're following along go and start back from the beginning and you know check all your mistakes all you know all this good stuff all the good stuff and if you are not make sure you keep this tutorial close to your heart so you won't miss anything so that is our back handle right there and of course we have our drawstring pouch which I have a tutorial on my channel as well. I'm going to link the video down in the description box and at the end of this video. And this tutorial shows you how to hand sew this pouch in case you don't have a sewing machine. So that was basically it for this bag. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for the 1k subscribers. If you're watching this in the future, hopefully I've got more subscribers and I'm monetized. Thank you guys so much for watching and like I'm stressing click on the notification bell because I have great content coming up and I am going to see you guys in my next video. Bye!